Okay, I believe we are now live. Welcome, ladies and gents. I hope you are having a great week. You just let me know in the comments if you can hear me clearly, the video is running smoothly, all of that sort of stuff. Um, drop your comments in. I've got the live feed going so I can actually read your comments as we're going through. So today on your weekly news, <laughs> I think I'm going to have to start doing more of these than once a week because I don't know about you, but I, what I'm noticing at the moment is everything just seems to be ramping up and getting faster and faster and bigger and bigger every week that goes by. You know, when I first was going to start this news about six, seven weeks ago, it was pretty slow. It was all about COVID and everything else. Uh, apart from that, it was pretty slow. Now we're seeing just constant, constant uh, things going on all around the world. It's just getting faster. Um, good. Everyone can hear me. Okay. Excellent. Thank you for that, guys. So yeah, I'll be honest, I'm, I'm quite concerned with all the developments that are going on, but we're going to focus today purely on Afghanistan, simply because there's so much to cover. I could talk for hours and hours on Afghanistan. Um, as many of you know, I actually served in Afghanistan when I was a, a very young soldier in my early 20s. That was, that was my first ever military deployment when I was in the army. And you know, I'm not, you know, usually I don't brag and things like that. I don't ever talk about all my medals and awards. But for today, I decided to replace my YouTube plaque with this plaque on the wall there. That is a commendation from the commander of British forces for Afghanistan. That was only one of three that was given out for Afghanistan that I got. So um, people are saying, put it on your YouTube today. Talk about it. Don't be, you know, so humble. Talk about some of these things. So I thought I'd put that on there today and actually, you know, mention that I did serve in Afghanistan. I had friends that were killed in Afghanistan. Um, so it is, and I served all over from Kabul to uh, Kandahar to Camp Bastion to the different FOBs, which are forward operating bases. So I, I, I've done that. I, I, I can speak a tiny bit of, of Pashto and, 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 you know, I know a lot of the Afghani people I spoke to you know, everyone from Afghan National Army to Taliban through to civilians, you know, in the general public, in the bazaars, through to civilians that worked on the bases. So I've got a pretty good grasp of Afghanistan. I had to study it. I know it quite in depth. So I'm going to talk today about a few of the things that I think are a bit unusual. And then I'm going to give you some context because what you're seeing on the news, a lot of it is just repeat. It's a little bit boring. It's very repetitive. Um, they're not really giving you the full picture. One of the first things that I, you know, everyone was asking me straight away was, Neil, I've gone on Google, I've done a search, and I can't find out why we've pulled out of Afghanistan. So I thought that was quite strange. I went on to Google, why, you know, has everyone pulled out of Afghanistan? There is nothing. There is no reasons anywhere as to why this has taken place. Very unusual. And then even more unusual is how fast it's happened. You know, this obviously they didn't have a proper plan. They've done it so quickly that it's caused just this huge now humanitarian as well as we'll get on to all the military equipment in the hands of the Taliban and all the US and other uh, nation citizens that are trapped. And, and I do mean trapped right now. The Taliban now control all the roads with checkpoints. The only bit of land, I guess we can say, that is still controlled by the US is a portion, not the whole thing, of Kabul airfield right now. So this is very, very worrying. And, you know, this is a very delicate peace process, I guess we can call it at the moment, between US troops and, you know, UN and the Taliban. But, it, but really, I mean, anything could set this off. And I think it's until about the 31st of August, there's this sort of arrangement in place. But after that, it's going to be very uh, interesting to see what happens. And I thought it was quite interesting. I've got a couple of notes here. I was watching a, a press conference just this week where uh, President Biden and some of his staff were asked, well, what about the safety of the U.S. citizens? Because there's still 15,000, as of today when I checked, U.S. citizens still trapped in the country that they, they, they're being told to get to the Kabul airfield to be lifted out. But they can't get there because the roads are all controlled by the Taliban. And what else have the Taliban now got? All of the military hardware, all the weapons, some of the, the most sophisticated weapons in the world the Taliban have got. Black Hawk helicopters, all this military equipment now 
can they fly, you know, jets and helicopters and stuff? I don't think so, <laughs> but they can definitely operate the heavy machinery, you know, and the, the transport and the guns and things like that. Trust me, they know how to handle all this stuff. But in terms of the, the you know, the air power, probably not at this stage. But still, this is the difficulty now. It's created a humanitarian thing. And I'm sure we've all seen this week the scenes of the aircraft taking off and poor, you know, people falling to their death that tried to hang on to the wings. It's just an absolute disaster overall. So why the exit, first of all? And then we'll go to the screen share. We'll look at some news articles and things like that as, as usual. So why the exit is what a lot of people have been asking. There's a number of reasons behind it. Um, one of them is that, the, you know, the public just don't want it anymore. They don't want the war. It's been going on for 20 years. Um, it's been going on for a long, long time. Um, so people don't want it. And it's not good for, for politics right now and for voters and, and things like that. So that's number one. Number two is that President Trump, when he was in, in office, he actually negotiated a number of peace deals, but what, which, which is fantastic. Peace deals all over the place. But one of them was with the Taliban. So he brokered this with his staff. Obviously, he didn't do it on his own, but with his staff, he brokered this peace deal. And as part of the deal was for the U.S. to withdraw their troops. So that was the reason for it. Now, what's actually happened, don't ask me how this has come about, but no one's, it, there wasn't a clear plan, there wasn't a clear picture, no one really seems to know how this all came about. And next thing, you've got people just scattered everywhere, no one knows what's going on, people pulling out here, people pulling out there, and it's just become an absolute disaster. So it was very, very badly executed. So I think that's the main context. Um... Okay, and the other thing that made me laugh this week, which was really weird, um, again, President Biden and his um, some of his staff were doing a press conference, and they were asked about Afghanistan. They said, "Let's get off Afghanistan and onto more important things." And they were sitting there saying, "But you know, sir, it's fifteen thousand people still trapped." And you know, the spokesman is saying, or the spokeswoman is saying, "Let's go into more pressing things. Let's talk about COVID." I I I'm like. Why do we have to keep getting back to COVID for every single news story? What is more important right now is all these people that are trapped in this massive humanitarian disaster or COVID. I just don't know why we need to keep going back to it. But hey, that's that's what we're going to. So let's go to some context now. I'm going to share my screen a second. OK, so let's start with this then. So here is Afghanistan, for those of you who don't know much about the country. I'm going to talk about um, minerals and stuff like that as well. So it, it actually, let's talk about the the Asian Five as well. So you have the Asian Five here. This is Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan, and Kazakhstan. So these are a sort of alliance, these countries here that are to the north of Afghanistan. To the east, we have, uh, in fact, let's come to that afterwards, that's China. But to the um, to the west of Afghanistan, you have Iran. Key thing at the moment, because what are we talking about a lot and what are we seeing is Iran. To the south border, you have Pakistan. And then India and some other places, we don't need to worry about any of these right now. There's nothing you know, really going on with Nepal and Bhutan, things like that. They're pretty fairly safe countries. But in terms of Pakistan, Iran, and, and one thing that makes me laugh, and if you remember the news conference with President Trump before he was president, this was going back seven, eight years, they, he was talking about, you know, why the US went to war in Afghanistan to find Osama bin Laden. He said, I tell you, I tell you, it wouldn't surprise me at all if he's hiding in Pakistan. He's probably, you know, this guy's six foot six. He's probably hiding in plain sight near their intelligence agency. Well, what actually happened this is, let me show you this. This is where they found, so this was the SEAL team that, that picked him up. He was actually found near the Pakistan military academy. I, I mean, this is this is just crazy. I don't know how uh, Trump predicted that, but, you know, smart, smart guy. He obviously knew a thing or two. So this is why it's strategic then. So here's, here's Afghanistan. There's Pakistan where, you know, that was the whole thing, going after Salman bin Laden, etc., fighting the Taliban. Now, this is why it's crucial Look here in this sort of region, what have you got here is China. And remember, China, Russia, and Iran have a sort of alliance as well. There isn't anything official. You can search for it on Google. You won't find anything. 
but they do. They actually do have an alliance. So that's China, Russia, Iran. I personally think that what's going to happen now that we've actually we've we've drawn out of Afghanistan is you're going to see something new form. So I think the Central Asian Five here are probably going to. I don't know exactly. They're probably going to come more into this alliance. Pakistan as well, Afghanistan, the Taliban. I think the Taliban are going to do some sort of a deal with China, personally. And here's why I think they're going to do that. If you look at the embassies that have been having problems right now in Afghanistan, in Kabul, they've mainly been Western embassies that have been evacuated. Now, what hasn't been had any problem at all is the Chinese embassy. No worries, the Taliban aren't interested in China at all. I think, uh, let me actually go to my notes here. I've got a couple of notes I wanted to talk about. Afghanistan has between one and three trillion dollars worth of rare earth minerals. Now, I remember when I was serving in, well, again, in the army, but I was in different countries in Africa. And everywhere I went, it didn't matter which country I went to, I was always seeing Chinese um, people. They were, I don't know what the term is for it, but they're, they're like... Um, you know, they've got that equipment where they're searching for minerals and they're doing all this research on mountains and, and all of that. Um, drop it in the comments, whatever that, that, that job title's called. But I saw them everywhere. I mean, I was in the middle of nowhere one day in Africa and this Chinese guy popped out and there he was doing his research and, you know, doing all this mineral research. So I think what they're going to do is they're going to try and do something in, with Afghanistan, with the, the Taliban. Because what does everyone need at the moment? Lithium. Who has the largest lithium reserves in the world is Afghanistan. That is a fact. Largest in the world. What What is going to be used for all the battery technology? You know, 2030, for a lot of countries, that's when no more cars can be built unless they're battery operated uh, electric vehicles. So I think this is what's, this is going to be key for China. I think this is going to cause a big issue for the West in a lot of ways because now they haven't got access to the lithium. China is going to have this as well as all these other mineral reserves and uh, all the factories and everything. China is, mark my words, the next superpower. They are going to absolutely dominate. Um, no one's going to be able to compete because China is exporting all the goods and services that the world needs. The U.S. really isn't producing a lot. It's It's got a deficit, trade deficit. So th that that's what I think is going to happen. Now, a little bit more context then. If you know much about Afghanistan, in the 60s, 70s and 80s, it was nothing like it is now. You know, you had uh, this backpacker type of theme back then. You know, that's what it used to be like. People would travel to Afghanistan like people go backpack into different countries today. It was only sort of late 80s, 90s when the Russian invasion and, and all of that took place that things started to change. Now, I won't go on too much about context. I know some of you will get, get bored with that. But uh, I wanted to play this. This, this was this. Um, watch this. Is the Taliban takeover of Afghanistan now inevitable? No, it is not. Because you have the Afghan troops have 300,000 well-equipped, as well-equipped as any army in the world, and an Air Force. Okay, so let, let me just pick one thing up here. That is not accurate. That's not true. The ANA, so the Afghan National Army, didn't, does not have 300,000 soldiers, or let's say did, because they don't exist now in a way. They had more like 50,000. So I don't know where this 300,000 number came from versus 75, like he's saying, 1,000 Taliban. I don't know about the Taliban numbers, but I know for a fact the ANA is not 300,000 strong. Trust me on that. Um, I would guess it was closer to 50,000. Okay. Against something like 75,000 Taliban. It is not inevitable. Mr. President, thank you very much. Your own intelligence community has assessed that the Afghan government will likely collapse. That is not true. Is it, can you please clarify what they have told you about whether that will happen or not? That is not true. They, so, did, not, they didn't, did not reach that conclusion. So what is the level of confidence that they have that it will not collapse? The Afghan government leadership has to come together. The, the thing is, saying the Afghan government has to come together, that 
this is a government. They, they already are together. I don't really understand the context of um, what's being said here. It's a government. It, it's already together. The issue is that a lot of the, uh, how can I put this? Afghanistan is like a tr- is a tribal region. You have your tribal elders and, and all this sort of stuff. It's not like the West. A lot of people try and compare Afghanistan, the people in Afghanistan, to people in the West. You can't com- compare the two people. It's a completely different um, world and different worldviews. Um, there's just you can't compare the two. They clearly have the capacity to sustain the government in place. And do you see any parallels between this withdrawal and what happened in Vietnam with some people feeling... None whatsoever. Zero. What you had is you had entire brigades breaking through. Okay. And I think you know the embarrassing thing that that happened just after that with, you know, (laughs) we know know what happened just after that. That That's terrible timing. Um, I don't know if President Biden was giving some bad advice there, but um, or maybe they just didn't want to say the truth. But it's pretty obvious the the Taliban were going to overtake the whole country. It doesn't take long, you know, for them to to overtake the whole country. Um, so that was I, I don't know. I don't know what President Biden was thinking with those with those comments. Next thing, this was interesting. I don't know what CNN are, are up to, but watch this. <laughs> chanting death to america but they seem friendly at the same time it's okay so they're chanting death to america but they seem friendly at the same time so i was reading a couple more stories and the cnn you know because people are giving them a lot of trouble as they as they always do and someone from cnn said oh well you know she was in there she was wearing a burqa she's being respectful no no that is not a burqa okay i wanted to bring this up for everyone so you understand this on the right is a burqa She's wearing a shador, okay? So you have your uh, niqab, you have your hijab. This is shador, and this is a burqa. So it's not even a burqa in the first place. Um, but I just find it so funny, some of these news outlets and, and what they're doing. And personally, I don't know what she is even thinking being there. There is no way that I would be there right now. Even if I had every you know weapon under the sun, I would not be where she is right now. I don't know what they are thinking. They need to just get out of that place. Um, everyone should just get out of Kabul. Uh, another interesting one. Additionally, the UN Security Council issued a joint press statement earlier today calling for a new government that is united, inclusive, and representative, including with the full and full and meaningful participation of women. The council spoke with one voice to underscore that Afghanistan must abide by its international obligations including to international humanitarian. Okay, so this guy, it looks like he's just been thrown up there personally because he's just, you know, he's stuttering his words, doesn't really know what he's saying. He, They have no power over the Taliban. All of these people coming out with all their statements that, yeah, they they look good and they you know, look good for the camera. They have absolutely no power over the Taliban whatsoever. And... The other thing is with 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 what they're saying about inclusive and things like that. The Taliban are saying they're going to be inclusive. So everyone is listening to this and saying, oh, yes, they're going to be inclusive of women and education and all this other stuff. No, no. Listen carefully to what they're saying. They're saying women will be inclusive in accordance with Islamic law or more specifically Sharia law. That's what they are saying. But no one's focusing on this. Even a lot of the CNN and all these, you know, um, female reporters who are who are really pushing the point. That I don't understand why they are not listening to. They're hearing what they want to hear, but then they're missing the key bit at the end. They're saying within the context of Sharia Islamic law, this is the key thing. So what does that mean? Well, probably won't get into it because I I just checked the terms and conditions of YouTube beforehand. It's not something that I can discuss, but definitely look into that for yourself in terms of what that constitutes in Afghanistan under the Taliban uh, for women. Something you should definitely be aware of if it's of interest to you. Next then, we should look at this. So in terms of what uh, was left and what the Taliban now has, this is the sort of equipment they've got. They've got all sorts of hardware now. Now, 
a lot of people are giving off numbers and statistics and saying they've taken over all of this right now. Personally, because I can't give you concrete, solid data with evidence, uh, I'm not going to give you statistics and what, what has been taken and what hasn't, because I honestly don't think anyone knows um, 100% what has been taken. But this is just some of the fiscal year and the equipment that was sent to Afghanistan um, during these, these time periods. So we know for a fact some of this will be now in their hands. Now, why is that interesting? Why is it crucial? Well, let's come back to this map again, map of Afghanistan. You now have a hardcore, well, um, I wouldn't necessarily, necessarily say well-trained uh, militants there, but they are definitely well fought. See, what makes a good soldier, as any of you who've served in the military will know, or a commander, should, should we say, is not someone who's been well trained and has got all the weapons and all the gear. No, it's been proven time and time again that they are always beaten by a um, another force, even if it's a smaller force, that has actually had some experience, right? So this is the key distinction in terms of uh, military conflict. You want someone who's battle hardened. So the Taliban are battle hardened. Okay, so here's key number one, battle hardened. Now they have all the gear, all this equipment, and they know their own landscape. So now you've got an even tougher um, people. I, I don't know what we can what we can say here. Um, they're not exactly an enemy, I guess, anymore. But you've got a tougher group who have got all the gear. They've got their battle hardened and they're sat right here in this key position. So if America ever wants to actually come back in or do anything like that, which I don't think anyone's got, got the interest in fighting anymore, they're going to be very hard pushed because they're, they're going back into this position against their own weaponry. So uh, this is another key thing to be aware of. I think I wanted to touch upon one more. Okay, yeah, so this is all about the people left behind, which I touched upon at the start. There is so many U.S. citizens that are just trapped. Um, it says here, some American journalists, contractors, and aid workers in the country may have made the mistake of believing President Joe Biden's assurances and now desperately seeking a way out. Now, this is the Wall Street Journal. So I'm surprised that they're actually, um, you know, going after. I mean, President Biden is just taking it. At the moment, everyone is going after him over all of this. Uh, even the, the Taliban, you've probably seen all the the um, images this week. I won't say too much on it, but trolling, absolutely trolling. Everyone is just going after him at the moment for all of this. But where there is smoke, there's often fire. Probably not doing a withdrawal like this without you know planning it all and making sure everything was in order is a, a pretty crazy in my opinion. I don't know how it came to this. Uh, anyone who contacts the embassy at the moment gets this warning. The U.S. cannot guarantee your security. Yesterday, thousands of Americans who registered with the embassy in Kabul received notice to begin to move to the airport, as an undefined number of U.S. government-provided flights will begin soon. But again, here's the problem. How do you even get to the airport? You like How are they meant to get there? By road? By walking? They're going to get caught by the Taliban. I don't really understand what's going on here. Please be advised that the United States government cannot guarantee your security as you make this trip. I just can't believe all of this. It's, it's crazy. And then just to really cap this off, this was the, the crazy. <laughs> the flights that were landing were telling all the Afghanis who were trying to flee the Taliban that they needed a negative PCR test to board the flights. I mean, can you believe this? This is absolutely mad. You need to have a negative PCR test to leave the country. Uh, these people are going to get killed. You know, they're being hunted down and they're told they need a negative PCR test. I just find it absolutely uh, crazy. All of this has been going on personally, my personal opinion. OK, so that is really what I wanted to cover today. Honestly, I've got so much news. I've got I've got probably five hours worth of news I wanted to cover with you, but I didn't want to go on too long today. I just wanted to give you some context for Afghanistan. I think I covered everything I wanted to talk about. 
anything else, anything else here that I wanted to go over? No, I think that's it. I've covered all the main points that I wanted to cover with you all. Hopefully that gives you some context. You don't need to watch 10 hours of all these news reports saying the exact same thing over and over and over again. Uh, that should give you enough information so you know why Afghanistan, you know, the regional importance of it, minerals, China, weapons, um, people who are trapped. Uh, let's pray that they get to safety soon um, and, and that and, and everything else around it. So hopefully that helped today. Uh, thanks. I will see you on probably Saturday, Sunday with your uh, weekly video. Uh, let me know if you want me to do more news videos. I could possibly squeeze in another one on a Tuesday or something. But but let me know. Uh, hopefully this helped today. Um, take care. God bless everyone. All right. See you soon.